Are there too many narcissist abuse videos that all say the same thing? A commenter posted a concern on one of my narcissist abuse videos entitled The Goal of No Contact for the Discarded Victim. The narc must be dead to you. The video was apparently boring with nothing new to say. It nearly put this person to sleep. Yes, it seems that people are just jumping on the bandwagon and making videos to get viewership by covering a popular subject. Yes, all of those videos go over the same material again and again. Now, of course, that commenter couldn't have possibly been someone that I know that doesn't appreciate me sharing my personal experiences. No, they couldn't have possibly been a narcopath themselves. I'll give that person the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they were just being sincere. Okay. It is just coincidence that they had absolutely nothing of any value to say and it was all negative. But I will allow you to judge that for yourself. The post is contained in the above mentioned video. The commenter has the option of removing that post as well as the conversation line containing my responses. My hope is that they leave the posts. That person has the right to their opinion. When asked to identify themselves as a narc or a narc abuse victim, the conversation ended. So anyway, was this person making a valid point? I tried to explain that each and every narc abuse video available on YouTube has its own unique perspective simply because each person making these videos is a unique individual that has had a unique experience. But the conversation went nowhere. Still, was this person's argument valid? Not from my perspective or the perspective of the multitude of narc abuse survivors that I have personally had conversations with. But the point is missed by this person who seems to know everything that has already been presented by the numerous videos already available. Yes, this person wants something fresh and new. Well, good for them. But since when were narc survivors watching narc abuse videos for entertainment or to get cutting edge knowledge of covert narcissism? Most people just need to get a basic, clear understanding of what covert narcissism is. Maybe this person had a detached but genuine curiosity, but if that person is really that interested in studying covert narcissism, there is plenty of literature available that will go into far more depth and detail. The DSM, numerous peer-reviewed journals, and innumerable books on narcissism are available just to name a few sources. Let that person study. Let them search and find the material not covered before. Then that person could make constructive suggestions. That would be helpful. Yes, the argument that this person is watching to get something new and different could possibly be valid, but think about the subject matter. You have to remember that covert narcissists aren't complicated people. These narcs are actually very shallow human beings, all reading from a similar playbook, although they exhibit this behavior for many different causes. It is the inconceivable evil and irrational motivation of these narcissists that is very difficult for people to understand, so repetition is absolutely essential. Most people watch narc abuse videos for one reason and one reason only, to get answers. Those answers are needed for the victim to put themselves together, to heal, to understand. No new or fresh information on the subject of covert narcissism is required for that healing process to occur. But many different perspectives are necessary and needed for that person to get the information in the form that they can personally understand. After narc abuse, the victim is devastated and has no idea what just happened to them. Many seek answers on their own and eventually are able to identify their ex as a covert narcissist. The paralyzed and nearly catatonic victim can barely function and one source of help is binging on the wide variety of narc abuse videos out there. My story of eating virtually nothing for six months is nothing new, and the only thing that kept me going was hours upon hours of listening to the accounts of others. Those numerous videos made by numerous people from numerous perspectives in many different styles validated both the fact that the abuse I had suffered was real and validated that there was something very wrong with my ex-partner. Yes, many an abuse victim has been so psychologically abused and deliberately gaslit to the point of not even knowing what is real or fantasy. Many of these victims actually believe they are to blame for it all. So repetition is needed, and over time, that victim finally understands. 
The very fact that someone is bored by the so-called same information casts doubt on their victim status. But again, the conversation ended before any clarification was made. My original intent was to incorporate the first comment and my response on this video, but I will instead leave that conversation line in the hands of that person to do with as they please. Going over the same old details and descriptions of narcissists does seem like beating a dead horse, but for the narc abuse victim that is trying to understand what happened to them, it's absolutely essential to get this information. Repetition from every angle is essential and needed because it allows the irrational and nonsensical behavior of the covert narcissist that is unbelievable and inconceivable to finally be believed by the victim. Yes, the counterintuitive and destructive as well as non-productive thought processes and motivational forces inside the covert narcissist are not easily understood or even believable to the average person. The stark, barren landscape inside that covert narcissist is frightening and takes your breath away. And this is compounded many times over when the victim realizes that this is what was going on inside the ex-partner's head all the while and they were totally unaware of it. The concept of someone taking on false personas and tailoring different personalities to different people and different situations is a story that takes many tellings to even be plausible. The duplicity, the treachery, the lying, the theft, the lack of conscience, remorse, and empathy are not easy for someone to imagine possible. The wanton cruelty of the covert narc and the glee that they have in bringing their previous soulmates to the edge is mind-boggling. So the more people that give their unique experiences and perspectives, the better. Only narcissists themselves want there to be a limit on the information. Most people spend a lifetime trying to cultivate functional behavior and become more mature and capable over time. So the concept of a person who cultivates and thrives on irrationality doesn't even make sense. It is literally unbelievable, but that doesn't mean it isn't true. It is true. And the numerous accounts about these narcopathic creeps make covert narcissism an undeniable fact. Yes, the covert narc would be more than happy to have covert narcissism debunked and turned into a myth, a trope. Yes, that narc would like nothing better than to twist reality and make all of those victims the crazy ones. But knowledge neutralizes the narc's power, and the more of the same knowledge, the better. So those myriad of experiences shared as videos are a treasure trove. A godsend, medicine to the recently discarded and vandalized narc abuse victim. I remember one anecdotal story that was particularly poignant to me at the time. I'm not 100% clear on the details or even who made these videos, but it was a woman talking about a narcissist who had just flown to a distant city, we'll call it Chicago, and then had somebody pick them up at the airport on their return. The narcissist claimed they had just come from Los Angeles. However, it was clear that they had actually just arrived from Chicago. The baggage was claimed from a Chicago flight, and all of the tags on that suitcase indicated that the flight that this person was on came from Chicago. So when the person was confronted with these facts, the obvious things that were clearly visible, such as those tags on the luggage, they doubled and tripled down on their lie that they had been to Los Angeles. The narc started making up more detailed lies about having been to L.A. in the face of the obvious facts. This very anecdote cleared up all of the doubts I had had about the numerous questionable and fanciful tales that my ex insisted were true. Yes, the average person could never conceive of somebody being such a lying, duplicitous sack of filth that they would hold on to a lie even in the face of obvious facts that were clearly visible and totally contradicted everything the narc was saying. That nugget of information played itself out multiple times when the narc revisited me. I showed that narc incontrovertible evidence that what they were saying was false, and they doubled down without batting an eye. Yes, that narc gave me two occasions to watch a liar in action, and just to be sure, I did question them, and true to form, that narc doubled down on their deception. Carefully observing and testing the validity of this bizarre pathological lying confirmed everything. Sure enough, that narc even when confronted with the truth, refused to admit it. In fact, they even embellished the lie further. Yes, another presentation describing the incredible cruelty and depraved indifference of an ex-narcopathic girlfriend gave me keen insight 
and confirmed further suspicions I had had about that narc X having zero empathy or concern or loyalty to me. Yes, my worst suspicions were confirmed. As unbelievable as it was to me at the time, those accounts made it clear that narcopaths don't care or love anyone but themselves. Yes, some people's presentations were long-winded, but to a person who was barely hanging on and searching for wisdom, it was like panning for gold, and oftentimes the patience was paid off with great nuggets of wisdom hidden inside that jargon. The jargon of a victim who had walked the path and was far further along the journey of recovery than I. Every now and then those nuggets of wisdom were custom made for my particular situation. That victim had experienced what I had experienced, and the insight shared was invaluable. The answers revealed by some of those personal videos made all of the difference. Those nuggets of wisdom gave the victim a foothold, a grasp on reality again, allowing that victim to pull themselves a little further out of the deep hole that narc put them in. It goes without saying that narcopaths think there are too many videos on covert narcissism. Yes, those narcs think a handful of videos are enough, since as far as the narc is concerned, and according to the narc, each and every video is covering the same ground. But is that really the narcopath's concern? Are they really trying to be helpful? Of course not. The narc's real goal is to stop the conversation, to shut it down, to stop the exposure of their kind. The possible narcopath might think they are making a good argument about there being too many videos that all cover the same ground. Yes, that might make sense and be a logical argument for a narcopath, but the victim has a very different point of view. They need answers, and the greater the variety, the more numerous the perspectives, the better. Victims take years and possibly decades to overcome the overwhelming and comprehensive abuse and damage the narcopath does to them on a spiritual, mental, and emotional level, not to mention the possibility of the lingering effects of physical abuse. So narcs and curiosity seekers who aren't narc abuse victims see no point whatsoever in all of these videos being made. Only an uninformed person or a covert narcissist who could never understand would come to the conclusion that these videos are being made solely to seek popularity. The damage these narcopathic creeps do is real and runs deep, and it is the victim's primary objective to stay as positive and as productive as possible in an effort to diffuse and eventually eliminate all of the deep-seated hostility and toxicity the narc gifted them with. Yes, not seeking an eye for an eye and resisting the urge to respond in kind is a very difficult task, and that requires knowledge and work and study. That victim seeks to heal themselves without doing what comes naturally in the form of seeking revenge. That is the minefield that the narc has left their victim in, and many a victim blows themselves up trying to make the narc pay. The path to mental and emotional health as well as spiritual health is to leave that narc to their own peril and walk away. Other victims' accounts in the form of video presentations can be helpful in showing how that seemingly impossible task can be achieved. Each and every victim that has walked that path has done it in their own way and therefore each and every video is unique and helpful to certain people. Yes, covert narcissists all act the same, and the descriptions of these sacks of filth can be uninteresting, even boring, but the victims who have overcome the abuse of these creeps have stories and solutions and descriptions of covert narcissists that are infinitely interesting and each viewpoint is worth listening to. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcomed. Peace be with you.